to the not so Christian in me show starring Southern Girl Welcome to the Not So Christian in Me show. I'm your host and CEO, Southern Girl Denise, and today we have another, another, another great show. Today's guest is the global recognized motivational speaker. He's a community leader and he is the founder of the Sanders Hand. Without further ado, please help me welcome Sebastian Sanders, AKA the youth principal <laughs> to the Not So Christian TV show. How are you? Doing great, how are you? That's good. Thank you so much for being my special guest. Yeah, no problem at all. Now, why they call you the youth principal? <laughs> <laughs> A uh, funny story. So uh, about five, six years ago, I was at a speaking engagement um, at San Antonio. And so the kids were coming into the auditorium, getting ready to fill the stands. And me and a principal were sitting on the side just chatting. And so this was a younger crowd. I think these were like third or second graders. So they were walking in and one of the kids called to me and was like, hey, are you my principal? And so me and the principal just like started laughing because she, in reality, she's the principal. And he came up to me and asked me, was I his principal? I guess because of what I had on or whatnot. Uh, but since that day, you know, I, I realized, you know, we were uh, we had something uh, great that we were building, and 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 it, it kind of prompted me to be the principal of this, you know, this new school, which is the future of education. What we want to do here at the Sanders Hand. Oh, okay, I like that story. I'm an educator, so I, I can definitely relate to that story, and I can see the students coming up to you say, "Are you?" I've heard that before too. Like, no, I'm, I'm the principal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so Sebastian, tell tell um, my viewers a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so Sebastian Sanders, I'm born and raised from Houston, Texas. So I grew up on the southwest okay. side of Houston. Uh, I went to college at University of Texas at San Antonio. I graduated in 2019 with my bachelor's in business management. I spent about four years working in the corporate world. I spent time uh, with Pepsi in Oklahoma City, where I was a customer sales associate, and then transferred over to be a sales district manager in grocery retail chain. Um, then I, uh, about two years ago, I, I transferred over to Frito-Lay where I started working in logistics and transportation. And so I have a really pretty extensive background in business management and development. Uh, but it all started for me on this journey of giving in, in 2017 when I was a college student. So at the time I was about maybe 19 or 20 years old and I was a sophomore at the time. So I'm getting ready to start applying for internships and I'm starting to really think about my future because I have two years of college left. And so I remember I was speaking to my career advisor. We were just talking and she was telling me, uh, hey, Sebastian, you know, it's, it's time to start filling out your resume. It's time to start getting some real world experiences if you want to have a job before you graduate. And so I started my community, you know, mindset right then and there because I've always had a heart of giving um, ever since I was a younger boy. Uh, my parents had started giving it to me when I was 12 years old. And so since then, being a man that I am today, been giving for so long, but with my passion for business, I decided to cultivate the two and Sanders Hand was, was founded. So I founded this while I was literally playing 2K at, at night with my homies who was in the room playing 2K. And I, on my mind, I'm just thinking about this organization I want to start. Um, didn't know anything about nonprofits, wasn't even 21 at the time, but I knew I wanted to do something. And I, my dad challenged me. He said, son, you can do more than just give out some backpacks. He challenged me to dig deep and figure out exactly how can I bridge that gap in our communities. And so Sanders Hand was founded in 2017. Um, since then, we've been blessed to serve roughly over 5,000 youth here in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, also in international and Ghana, Africa as well, uh, through our Young Billionaires Club program, which serves as a uh, business incubator that teaches children uh, the skills of business and financial literacy, stuff that essentially goes untaught inside of the traditional classroom. Absolutely. Now, speaking of the Young Billionaire Club, you guys are um, getting ready to launch something soon. Tell us a little bit about this project that you guys are working on. Yes, super excited for this project. A uh, long time coming. August 19th, we are launching our first retail store, which is going to be a thrift store, the Young Being Nears Club store. This store is going to be pretty much the future of shopping and education by allowing every customer that comes in our building, shops and have a great time. When they leave, they're leaving with digital assets, a digital QR code to financial literacy lessons. What this program and what the store is doing is, is extending our program beyond the students, but now it's touching the parents and other community members. This is broadening our reach and this is having us, uh, pushing us into a, a world where we're, we're planning to serve over 100,000 students and families within our first year of operations. 
But on the flip side, the store is also going to provide our kids with on the job training. And so the, the program is, is going to take the application based learning that they learn in the traditional classroom setting. They're going to take it straight into the workforce by allowing our students to work inside of the store. And they're going to learn hands on operations of business, sales, marketing, customer service, supply chain, all of those things. So they can get that real life experience, stuff that they don't get in a traditional, you know, typical classroom. And so uh, I'm super excited for this on August 19th. Can't wait to open our doors and, and and we're planning to have at least three to five physical locations here in Texas within the next five years. Oh wow man this is awesome. I never heard of anything like this before um that, that you can go to a thrift store, purchase something from a thrift store and get educated at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like how did you guys come up with that whole I've never heard that before. <laughs> never I think you guys are the first one to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, for us, I, I looked at it like our program is is doing, you know, it really well with our children. But at the same time, to really improve the quality of living in a household, you have to reach the parents somehow, some way. And so you're not going to be able to have parents flowing in your program from eight to five because naturally they're at work trying to provide for their family. And so this store, it, it takes it to another level by you. Now you got the kids and the parents where they both learning from the same uh, program, whether they're shopping and getting the information, or whether their kids are actually students, a part of the program. And so what we wanted to do is we just want to revolutionize what it looks like educating our people. And the thing about it is you have to meet people where they are. Um, everybody's not on social media. Everybody's not in the classroom. Everybody doesn't have time to go to a class or a course but everybody shops right so you had to kind of figure out what everybody likes people love nice items and everybody loves a nice discount so if you can provide quality items at a discounted price in a in an area where it's much needed you can also reach them by educating them at the same time um, and, and that's going to allow a parent who doesn't have that time to actually go and pick up a course or go to a class or, 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 or attend a session where they can learn. Now, if they come in and shop some items that they've been looking for, they can get educated at the same time. And now we're knocking out two birds with a stone. And so that's exactly where the idea had came from. And we wanted to basically extend our program and extend our reach and really, you know, take a grapple on what it looks like to improve the quality of living for everybody. And you're definitely doing that. You're definitely doing that one store at a time. So I know you say that you're going to build three store, trying to build three stores in um, the Houston area. What about stores in other um, cities in, in, yeah, in globally? Definitely. Globally, yeah. We, we definitely want to take this on the road because there's a community everywhere that needs um, education and literacy enhancement. And so we're going to start here in the Houston, Texas area. Um, eventually going to go back to San Antonio where everything started for our organization. Um, and expand operations there. And then from there, you know, really just taking it to wherever God places us next. Um, you know, as you continue to build out and expand, you, you start to recruit more members, um, things get on a, on, a, on, a, on a more of a global scale. And we want to have an opportunity to where we want to be up there when you start talking about the Goodwills and, and uh, the other donation centers across the world that everybody's used to, right? Those are great places that served our community for a very, very long time. But what we're doing is we're adding a twist to where we're educating people. And so when we want to be in a room, when you talk about Goodwill, we want you to bring up the Young Billionaires Club store as well. And so that's the primary goal and the focus. And by doing so is, is making sure that we're expanding the right way, not moving too fast, but moving at the right pace. Um, and having the right people in place to, to actually pull this off and do this. And I think with the right commitment, we can definitely do so. Um, we're going to do some really great things with this first location. And I'm pretty sure our second location should be in the works within the next one or two years from now. Okay, so where would the first location be located at? Yes, yeah, so the first location is in Houston, Texas, on the southwest side of Houston, not too far from the uh, West Thomas area. It's going to be located at the address of 12579 richmond drive and that's going to be sweet 600. okay yeah so that's a good area that's a really good area that's really good now um tell us a little bit about the other programs you guys are going to have because you know you, yeah, said you so have other programs yeah so our, our, our organization, you know, our, our, our bread and butter is going to lie right with the, the Young Billionaires Club program, which is our education component of our organization. But we also have a community component uh, where we do a annual uh, back to school drive. We do an annual charity basketball game for Christmas to give our toys. But the whole purpose of our community initiative is not just to have community events, but we want to provide people with those community service hours for college students, uh, for people who are just looking to give back and volunteer. Also, strategic partnerships is a big thing that our organization relies on. 
And so through education and community is how we service pretty much all of our students and our parents. But our Young Billionaires Club program is, is the heart and soul. It's our sole program that we operate. Um, this is a program that's designed for ages 12 through 25. So that's middle school, um, high school, and early college students. And our Young Billionaires Club program is at a minimum of six weeks to a full academic school year. And so our kids come in and they learn a series of those different business elements our business, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, customer service, marketing. They're going to take those applications and go straight into the Young Billionaires Club thrift store where they can receive a universal basic income um, to actually fund, you know, what they're learning, but also fund their potential business ideas. That's good. And so the, the students that go through your program, these are um, these are these are not special special needs students, it's just regular students, right? So that's that's another thing that sets you apart from yeah yeah exactly and, and honestly we pretty much serve you know really any type of student right i always ask my kids just come with a heart to learn and a pencil <laughs> we'll take care of the rest as long as you're willing to come here and learn and, and you're going to be active you know we're ready to service any and everybody and so we have a pretty uh really good generical um you know way we teach right and, and it's, it's 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 uh you know female students male students ages 12 to 25 um and, and it's and, and honestly you you see so much um, no matter where a student comes from, these, these kids have some amazing ideas. And so we try to keep our programs, you know, super open and, and to anybody who wants to learn, because ultimately you, you can be a, a student or you can be an adult who needs to learn these skills. And so uh, we know there's opportunity, you know, everywhere. Right. And for the thrift store, um, for when it comes to employment, what is the criteria to um, be employed at the thrift store? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Great question. So right now we're looking to, um, you know, fill our staff. Uh, with a store manager and, and, and a sales associate, a few sales associates. Um, and, and my biggest thing for that is experience, right? Uh, you know, make sure you have the right, you know, retail experience um, to work in a retail, you know, manner. Customer service is, is a really big thing for us as an organization, not just as a store, but as an organization. You know, we built this on priding ourselves on being very professional, uh, very people oriented. So customer service is a big thing. And right now we're looking to fill those two roles at the store. So our sales associates are looking at anywhere for about $10 an hour, looking at about 20 to 30 hours per week. And then a store manager is the same, about 20 to 30 hours per week, looking at about $17 an hour. Uh, both of those posi pos uh, positions have an opportunity for promotions and also price increases um, or hourly wage increases as time progresses. Um, but on the flip side of, of, of as, a, as an organization, our kids are going to work in the store. Our kids, and actually, and, and, that, and for them to work in the store, they have to flow through the program. Uh, which they would have to go through the, the academic lessons and those things. Then once they you know rotate out of those lessons, then it's time for them to go inside of the store. So right now we actually have three students that we uh, had in our summer program that we had for about the whole month of June. We had 16 days with them. So they got to learn the full program. Their parents, I talked to their parents, they're going to be at the grand opening. And those three kids are looking to actually be working at the store this fall. So we're going to have about three kids ready to work. Um, within this first year, we're, we we plan to employ at least over 500 students. Um, and so we're going to spread our kids out in. And honestly, the kids will probably get a lot of the weekend hours because of school, right? Um, but we want to employ a lot of kids around the Houston area where they can just come in and, and learn these lessons, go through our program, but make some, uh, some pretty good money where they can take home and say, mom and dad, I've been learning these lessons. I want to invest into this. I want to start this business. And so that's our primary goal um, when it comes down to employment. And it'll be two sides. It'll be the actual store employees itself. And then our kids that are going through the program will be um, employed as well at the store at, at various times, depending on their availability. But also any any you know groups that want to volunteer for the weekend or volunteer a day out of their time, any individuals that definitely want to come in and just lend a helping hand. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization and we can provide you know community service hours. And so our doors are always open for volunteers as well. I love the fact that you guys give out community service hours because there's a lot of organizations that are always looking for volunteers, but they never mention community service hours. And I love yeah. the fact that you guys are are making sure that your volunteers get those um good those hours. How important is that for your volunteers to get those hours? You know, I think it's important because you never know exactly, you know, what that person is needing those hours are for. Uh, for a job, maybe to get in some type of grad school or college, for letter recommendation. So you never know exactly what a person is needing in order to, you know, complete those community service hours. I know for me, when I was in college, I, I didn't have any community service experience until I started my organization. And then when I started my organization, I started to pull so many of my peers 
on the college campus to the organization for them to fill those volunteer hours. And a lot of my friends was getting internships. They were getting jobs just based off of the volunteer experience that they had with the organization. So it truly means a lot, you know, when you when people can actually volunteer, but they can act, actually vouch for it and say, hey, I have over 100 community service hours where I work with children on programming and things like that. Uh, communities of um, employers, corporations, they love to hear those type of stories because they know you can actually do the business, but also, you know, build the people side as well. So I think it's very important to any organization. If you're a 501c3 nonprofit, I think you have to have some type of initiative where you give out community service hours. Nonprofits, we're so used to taking a lot from our volunteers um, that we don't realize sometimes we also need to give back to them, you know, whether that's a, a T-shirt or some hours or something. It goes a long way because if you can establish a partnership with a corporation or an individual or an organization to say, hey, every year we want to give you guys two thousand dollars. I'm sorry, two thousand community service hours. That's going to help that that business or whoever that's looking for uh, maybe get more funding for their business or also for those those individuals looking to fill a resume. They may help them get a job and things like that. So it's a it, it's a very transactional relationship but it's transactional for the right reasons um and so i think it, it's important that you develop those community service hours and you can't do this alone and so a lot of times when you're trying to do programming you're trying to do events you need volunteers i learned that very early and so that's what it's all about um i want to talk to you about collaboration i know that you've been talking about collaboration earlier um mm -hmm. collaborate with your old employer which is pepsi and frito-lay yeah, collaboration is, is definitely important. And so we, we're definitely going to collaborate with them in any capacity. Um, you know, I, you, you, you have to establish strategic partners very early uh, because, you know, a lot of times you can do a lot on your own. But if you can have partners that come in that's willing to invest time, uh, funding, resources, it helps a lot. And it helps you go from 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 the ground all the way to the top. And so we you know. We got this far without a lot of funding because we did a lot of strategic partnerships. And so very young organization. Um, and I realized like, hey, we may not have the, the history of other organizations, but if I can network and build the right relationships, it may not always be a monetary donation. They may be able to you know, sponsor something that we specifically need and we can take that into take our programs and grow our programs. And so collaboration is key. And so I, it's always important as an organization, you keep your doors open. Um, you're always networking. You're always sharing what you're doing because you never know who's watching you. There's a, there, there's been so many times where we posted something and you may not get a bunch of likes, but there's that one person that watched it and they may be working somewhere and they may say, hey, I have a, a, a truckload of T-shirts or a truckload of to you. That goes a long way as an organization. And so collaboration is everything. Um, and you must, you know, you know, virtual strategic partners in the community for sure. That is so true. I love the fact that you said that, that a lot of times you feel like, nobody's watching no no i'm not getting no feedback from this post but you're so right somebody out there only it only take one person that so, one person can tell that other one person they can really take take your business to the next level exactly. so that's good advice to tell people like you know don't don't get discouraged keep going whatever whatever you have your heart whatever your heart desire to do move forward with it don't don't give up um do you have any final thoughts uh, for our viewers tonight yeah, you know, I want to close out and with a call to action. You know, I want to challenge any of our listeners and viewers, you know, definitely join this movement, what we're doing with this Young Billionaires Club program, because we're changing what the future of education looks like for our kids. But we're really on a front line, empowering kids with tools that's going to help them create generational wealth and success. And so by doing so, you know, if you have some items in your house, you know, clothes, electronics, old shoes, whatever you have that, that's that's decent, that's quality. I challenge you, just donate it to the store. You know, uh, find us on social media, or Instagram and Facebook, at Sanders Hand Org. Uh, follow us. Uh, visit our website at www.sandershand.org. Send us a message. Uh, send us an email. Send us some time to drop off your, your items. That goes a long way. Um, if you want to be a volunteer, you know, we're always looking for volunteers, experts in the field. If you want to volunteer your time at the store, definitely reach out. We can put you on a schedule. We'll definitely uh, need those helping hands. And then lastly, you know, if you have the, the opportunity and the capacity to do so, I challenge you to join our monthly donor program. Um, you can join us at $25, $50, or $100 a month. Um, and you can be really a part of this change and really be a strong community partner. Um, it's just like a Netflix subscription. You're just subscribing now to change the life of, of students here in the Houston, Texas area. So anybody that has a heart for change, anybody that has a heart for youth and development, um, I definitely want you to join us on this on this journey of giving. Um, and definitely follow us on social media. And if you're in the Houston area and you're free, please come out to the grand opening and tell somebody. It goes a long way by just sharing it and sending it out to a group of friends. 
uh, join us on August 19th at the Young Billionaires Club Thrift Store, 12579 Richmond Drive, Suite 600. Uh, we're going to cut the ribbon at 1 p.m. and we're open all day from 12 to 6. So I look forward to, to seeing everybody there. Okay, good, good. Now, how can we find you again on social media? Yep, you can follow our organization on social media at Sanders Hand Org on Instagram and Facebook. You can follow me personally on my Instagram at Sebastian J. Sanders. You can visit our website at www.sandershand.org. And once you follow us on social media, you'll see our website. And you'll see a link that takes you to all of our contact information. You can check out our YouTube channel. You can check out different links and you can see some of those financial literacy lessons yourself. And if you want to get in touch with me, definitely reach out via email and we can set something up for sure. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you so much for being my special guest. I pray that God will see you to open up multiple doors for you. That's right. I can see you going um, to other countries besides Ghana. So keep up the good work. I'm proud of you. Um, and you have all of our support here at the Nasa Christian Me Show. Yes, ma'am. That means a lot. Uh, thank you so much. And we'll definitely stay in touch and uh, do this again sometime. Absolutely. And I want to thank everyone who are tuned in. If you guys are interested in being a guest on the Nasa Christian Me Show, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram and Facebook at the Nasa Christian Me Show. Also, feel free to sow us a seed via cash app, dollar sign, T-N-S-C-I-M. Until next time, remember that no matter what you guys are going through, God will always see you through. Stay blessed up. Bye-bye.